Hello, welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. My name is Hamilton. We're going to be going through TA today as we did miss TA Mondays yesterday. So I thought I'd catch you up on what I'm doing, my plan here. Exactly how I'm going to be making money here. All right, exactly, exactly as predicted. Do I still have this guy? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so for today for the Bitcoin price, let's have a look at what is going on here. The daily looks rough. It looks bad. It looks like your dad. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what I can say here is it's wicking to both sides. That's, that's the sign of a very indec indecisive market, right? Uh, and if we are zooming out on a daily as well, we had this ginormous wedge structure. We did come down. We hit a pivot point. We retested it. We started a wave. And that wave... That wave coming through here in the streets is uh, down to 33.8. So just be aware of that. But again, if we get down there, I think it will just be a, a wiki scenario. We'll tap on 35. We'll reclaim the volume weighted ATR band. And we'll slam in along for some girthy gains here. Yeah. Go there. Um, that's pretty much the daily indecisive right now. I think it, it's it's probably more applicable to be talking about the four hour if we are going to be doing anything, right? So, what have I been doing in this area? How have I been making copious amounts of cash? Let me tell you. Let me tell you here because it's uh it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. So, um. As we came down into this area, and I did update you guys in the community tab yesterday as we didn't get a video out, but I did want to update you guys anyway, right? Um, I basically have been looking at this momentum indicator uh, of my own making, by the way. Uh, it is called the Breakout Machine, and it is very, very good at judging momentum in the market. What kind of moves are happening, what we can expect, uh, and not just, not just blindly following it and putting in longs and shorts, but more about the micro cycles and more about about, uh, as I said, what to expect here after a wave down and whether we are overextended or not, right? So my uh, analysis yesterday was essentially this. We're pretty overextended in terms of this. We've had two waves down here um, and we can see here with this wave up, if I'm just going to bring up the price action just to really show you what happened here, right? We can see uh, what this blue line is. If you don't know, if you're not an avid consumer of the content here on the channel, by the way, that's okay, right? Welcome, by the way. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. But uh, with this, this is essentially the distance, the average distance between moving averages. It's got a little algo tweak that I've uh, put my own sprinkle in here on it. But uh, overall, that's essentially what it is. And if we are looking at this, we can see generally as moving averages get close together, this gets closer to the middle, right? So if the moving averages are crossed all the way towards the upside, then it's going to be going up. If, if, the, if it's going towards the downside, then uh, yes, the opposite will happen and we, we get moves and it gets potentially overextended. So this is this is a little bit like uh, RSI or whatever, uh, MACD in terms of that sense, like uh, a momentum-based indicator. Indicator. So as this turns back up here, this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get a huge upwards wave towards the sky. No, what this, this this actually means is the moving averages are getting closer together. That can still happen in sideways markets, right? Uh, so if we are looking at this, uh, the goal here is to basically check and see if we are going to head down or up from this uh, or sideways, right? And what we can conclude here with this thing is uh, generally, and this is the reason why I'm going to talk to you guys about grid strategy in a minute, right? Um, as this kind of start curling over here, and as we started curling in terms of momentum here as well, uh, for me, looking at this 40k area, it was going to be a pretty decent support. We are down 40% from the top, so I'm pretty confident that we should be getting a wave up pretty soon or at least a nice range right um my first thoughts was yes we should be getting a wave up pretty soon but secondarily thinking um <laughs> Everyone else thinking that, right? I'm seeing it all over Twitter. I'm seeing it everywhere. Retail, mainstream, dumb money is all over this saying waves up, right? I'm not saying if you think that um, <laughs> you're dumb money, right? I, I thought that as well. And um, Seeing the sentiment that strong towards the upside, uh, my, my opinion was, okay, we can go down lower, but we're pretty overextended. Um, and I'm leaning more towards sideways more than anything, right? So uh, my prediction around this area was pretty volatile sideways price action. And what's the strategy if I can conclude that opinion uh, in that sense, right? So what I did here was set up a grid strategy. So that grid strategy is 
from uh, 435. If you don't know what grid strategy, I will explain. Don't worry. Um, but 435 down to 39.5 as well, right? So just this area. And we did actually tap that right on the dot yesterday. It was very, very nice. I was drinking. I was at a party. It was my girlfriend's birthday. So uh, thanks, thanks to you guys uh, who, who said happy birthday to her as well. That is cool. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's absolutely fine. I, I get it. You're, you're just being nice, right? It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're seeing this, uh, we're seeing this uh, range form, and that was the prediction. That's what I was looking at here. Even if we head down to 30k, right? The main point was yes, I'm expecting sideways first. Okay, uh, so with this, yes, we did get that sideways action. We did get that wickiness, and um, we did get a very nice bid coming in here, throwing us all the way back up to the price action channel, which filled a lot of our orders here. And if if we are if we are going to just explain what this is really quick, a grid strategy is basically saying, hey, I think the top side is here. I think the bottom side is here. This is the range I'm expecting us to go in, uh, basically from the 55 EMA um, down to the, the pivot point here, which is at 40K. But I was expecting potentially some wicks and traps below 40K. That's That can still happen. I'm still running my grid because of that, right? Uh, but yeah, that's generally the thought process behind setting up that range, setting up that grid, right? If we expect sideways, and so many new traders don't even understand sideways as a thing, they just think up or down, right? So if we're expecting sideways and we want to set up a grid strategy, basically what what this is and many many very successful traders do this just all the time on everything right a high time frame range a low time frame range and a mid time frame range uh, and they make tons copious amounts of cash because obviously bitcoin does this all the time right uh, so that's cool and yeah essentially what this is here guys is it's layering cells this side when you set it up so when you set it up it will split your money it will put half of it into btc and half of it into dollars some call this a hedge um I mean, you, it is technically a hedge, but it's it's not a great hedge based on the 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 dollar not being as volatile. It doesn't do the opposite of what Bitcoin does, so it's not technically a hedge in that sense. But technically, it is. It's just not good, valid term to use for it in my opinion anyway right as a trader but uh, that's not important what's important here is how it works and basically it'll split your money in half it'll say hey if we go up we're selling into that if we go down we're buying into that right so layering buy orders with that uh, and then laying sell orders at, if bitcoin does this then we make a lot of money essentially automatically we don't have to stress we don't have to worry about entries and exits it's just doing it for us and if we get out of this range and we lose this pivot then we can just turn the grid strategy off right uh, or we could take it off and then find the next range and do it and i know many many traders that literally do this all the time right they'll they'll see what range we're in and they'll just set up a grid there and if we get out of that grid they just move their grid to the next range right just between two pivots so like between these two is a, is a valid one as well um and and, and just rolling it that way, right? We can see here as well, uh, if you have been watching the channel, this is basically what I did in this area as well. It was fantastic. We made copious amounts of cash. Let's go. And uh, with this as well, yeah, I mean, that's the strategy I've been running. If we're talking about predictions here, guys, let's uh let's let's dive in okay so predictions right now here for the short term is as I said, I'm expecting sideways, but uh, more often than not, I'm expecting up than down okay so if we do go sideways here then uh yeah you could make measure moves uh in this sense but uh, for me these aren't really too playable this is very much in the forest and i'm running the grid anyway right and this is just uh dangerous to say the least if you are taking a short in such a wiki area so again i'm expecting very volatile sideways price action so we can break out this pattern doesn't mean we're going to bang it up it just means we could really really bart around here right that's my main uh main conclusion i'm expecting a big wiki trappy dirty mess here coming through okay let's get some dirts in the comments <laughs> the, i will award one dirt uh two weeks on the wad machine in the comments throw it in there dirt <laughs> uh, anyway uh yeah the other side here is if we do get over this trend line very very good if we get over 45.5 we said this before right but if we get over 45.5 that hasn't changed i'm still expecting that to be a pretty nice trade and there might actually also be a trade oh there might also be a trade here uh, at the top of my grid here if we do get towards the upside. Uh, what we do want to happen really is to make some kind of pattern here that's bigger and more reliable. And then if we break over that um, 43.5, not only will we close our grid, but we'll also be... Um, be uh, 
able to put a valid, sorry, just losing my trail, I thought there, but able to get a, a valid measure move in which we can play along over the 55 up to that last pivot. So yes, interesting times, fairly exciting times here. Uh, and again, normally I don't talk about these grid strategies or these sideways uh, motions, but I feel like a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the dumb money in the market, this compliment here for you guys, by the way, a lot of the dumb money in the market has left, right? They've got liquidated, obliterated, get away from me, you dirty leverage junkies uh, and now there's not really anyone new to teach right so I'm bringing it to that next level here where um, I'm basically going to be teaching you guys how to identify whether we're going up or down or trending in directions or what to expect um, in a more probable sense and the reason I'm doing that is because I know at this point that you guys won't be following my every move and taking this as signals right I will never ask you to do that I'll never suggest doing that that's not smart you need to be thinking with your own brain your own creativity your own edges and then executing those edges on the market to make the monies right but in terms of cycles and micro cycles uh, it's important to be thinking about the most likely scenario which is either going to be up sideways or down and then up can be a certain kind of volatility down can be a certain volatility and then sideways can also be a certain volatility and if you can hone in on those uh, and those which are more likely then you can set up certain strategies whether for example it's a downtrend that's really nice and we're below this volume weighted ATR band and we're just banging it towards the downside or whether it's uh, as we said before this bad boy with an uptrend uh, riding along that volume weighted ATR band towards the upside that's also a good move uh, in, in, a, in a nice healthy trending market or in an unhealthy volume volatile market like this, finding ranges, finding horizontals, uh, waiting for downtrends or uptrends to end, and then expecting more sideways than trending, because we're not really trending too much at the moment. Uh, we're trending down, obviously, on the higher time frames, but these these four hours, very volatile, uh, and we've got to take advantage of that, expecting ranges to form, right? If this thing just goes sideways for another month or so, right, uh, we're going to make copious amounts of cash, even if it stays in this range and it's super boring for everyone else. Us on the channel, we're going to be making the girth, okay? It's about 1% a day, really, if we stay this volatile, right? So that's money. If you were to type into a calculator right now, I say this a lot, but <laughs> if you just type into a calculator, uh, your balance and then just 1% every day uh, equals, 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 equals for a month, you're going to be very rich by the end of the month, right? I'm not saying this is exactly what I expect to happen, but for now, with the market like it is, with what I'm seeing here, this is what I'm doing until we leave this range. If we leave this range, my strategy will change, as I said, going into a pattern, right? So again, just bringing it more towards a lesson side of things here, that's my plan. Again, uh, expecting sideways if uh, sideways or up more than anything, but just be aware if we lose this low, if we lose basically 39, I would say 39, more than anything here. If we lose 39, then um, yeah, I would be expecting us to come down to 35 in which uh, nothing has changed here on the long term. I will be uh, executing another buy here around 35 and a big one at that. Um, but I'll wait for the low to form, to be honest, before I do anything. I, I want to be sure unless it's... Uh because if, if it's like a COVID crash or something, it's not looking great, right? Uh, we will talk about on-chain on Thursday, but your update here is not much has changed here on the on-chain. So yeah, cool. Um, and Ethereum, just to wrap it up, looking a bit better here, actually getting back above that volume-weighted ATR band, but uh, doing nothing different here compared to Bitcoin, right? Uh, so that is going to be the video. I will see you in the next one. Have a fantastic... What is it, Tuesday? Tuesday. Have a fantastic Tuesday, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for liking it, by the way. I'll see you there. i see you liking that video. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, again, check out my last video if you want the news as well, because we do that. So, peace out, and goodbye from Big Hobbits.